Hey, what's up guys, Mendel here. So today we're gonna dive into advanced metal drum programming. So as always, let's dig right in. Okay, so here we are. Um, let's first listen to a bit of music. This is a song I'm working on, probably releasing it somewhere in this year. And uh, let's take a listen. Okay, so nice, thick and heavy, that's how I like it. So before we continue, there's an important thing I need to show you uh, that I showed in the first drum programming video from last year, but it's really essential for this video. So, so when I go to MIDI and I go to Logical Editor, this tool is one of the best tools out there in my opinion. And this is what I'm talking about. So this is a preset I made and I bound it to a key command. And what this basically does, so as you can see, type is filter target, condition equal, parameter none, parameter, value two, set random values between 122 and 125. What that basically does, if I select some MIDI notes and I use this key command or use this preset, it randomizes the MIDI notes between 122 and 125, which is perfect for like, fast rolls and etc. And you can set this to anything. You can set it to 100 or to 50, whatever your like your sample values are, where it sounds like softer hits or like very hard hitting hits. But let me show you. So when we take a listen to this, you could call it a snare fill. Um, it sounds a bit robotic. It's programmed, but we're gonna try to humanize it a bit. But let's take a listen. Now what you could do is drag it down so they're all the same. Or when I hit the key command for that uh, logical editor preset, if you take a look at this here, you can see it randomizes the velocities between 122 and 125. That sounds a tiny bit better, but now when I lower it a tiny bit, it should sound a bit more human. So that to my ear sounds way better than like putting it like this. That's like almost all rim shots, which is impossible, like at that loud. So to compare them, this is without. And this is with. And as you can tell, like those softer hits make it, in my opinion, like sound way more human. Now you could basically apply this to anything. For example, if I would create a fast uh, fill with toms like this, that thing, especially like this part, it's not very robotic. So when I select those, I hit the key command, lower it a tiny bit perhaps. You can also set that in the preset if you want. That sounds way better to me. Don't you think? Instead of... Especially this one. Because when a drummer is playing those really fast fills, they're not hitting like rim shots. It's more like softer, so it's more natural. Not, not that they per se want to, because you really wanted to hit it as loud as possible but it's impossible to play like 16th notes at what is it, like almost like 260 BPM with the power of doing like single eighth note strokes. And the possibilities are endless. I could do this with hi-hats, right fills, or like snare and tom fills. Just hit the randomize button and it sounds human instantly. I have done this on my solo albums a lot of times. For example, the same thing here, like all the snares are 127 velocity and sounds robotic. So what I'll do is just select these notes, hit the preset, 
Perhaps lower it a tiny bit if I want. Let's take a listen. Like, especially on the blast beat, this sounds better to me than this. It's like a bit, bit more softer, a bit more human. So in metal, and especially in death metal, and that's kind of extreme stuff, uh, a lot of times you have like fast kick patterns. And there's a cool trick to make them sound a bit more human than just putting everything on the grid. So we got this part. So we're gonna change it to a double kick part. So let me just remove all these kicks right here. And let's add 16 kicks in there. And I'll make it nice and head bangy. So let's add just a snare on these parts. So we have this. Okay, that sounds cool, but the kicks sound a bit robotic. And here's a very cool thing I often do to make a sound more human. So a drummer never, like no human drummer can do like 16 kicks exactly 100% on the grid. And in my opinion, that's the beauty of human drummers. So we can kind of emulate that to get a more human feel in our program drums. So I'll open the quantize panel by just pressing Q or any key command you have on it. And this is the part we're gonna focus on, the ticks. I love this part. So what I'll do, I'll select all these 16th kicks, this part, right? I'm gonna up the ticks, which means it's that many ticks off the grid where the note's on. So when we zoom in, take a look at these notes. So when I press quantize, you can see randomized, they shuffle around. And that's the beauty of it, because first of all, none of the kicks are exactly on the grid anymore, which this is the thing we want. And second of all, the snares aren't like perfectly aligned with the kick, which gives us the more human feel in my opinion. So let's take a listen. Okay, perhaps a bit more ticks. Let's see where it goes. You can see I put it on 16 ticks. So it's like really not on the grid anymore on most of them. But when I listen to it, now with my kick samples, it sounds way better like this because the distances between the kicks aren't perfectly even. And in my room over here, I get a more like fatter low end almost. So let's solo the drums. And let's compare. So it's on 16 ticks now. And then we'll put it on zero. So it's all on the grid. Again, 16. On the grid. Yeah, to my ears, when I put it on zero, it sounds like a robot. That's to my ears. But let's say if I put it on perhaps even 20. Okay, that's a bit too much. Let's try 15. I personally think as far as drum programming can go, this sounds more vibey. It gives a better vibe in my opinion. Let's check both in the mix. Now I'll put it on loop and I'll switch between like zero ticks, so perfectly on the grid, like a robot almost, and like 15 ticks, perhaps even 20 ticks, or it's a bit more like, hopefully human. But watch what happens with the low end.
Now I don't know about you, but over here I hear a big difference in the low end. When I put it on zero, it sounds okay, a bit tighter, but like not really low endy. It does a lot of low end, but compared to the one when I put it on 15 ticks, it's almost like a one decibel boost around 50 or 60 hertz. Now let's try the same thing on some blast beat variations. So I'm gonna delete this and let's first program a simple blast beat. So remember that shortcut I had? I'll use it also on the hi-hats. So watch this here. Randomized. You can, you can definitely hear like that. Not every hit is exactly the same, just like a real drummer would have. Now again, I'm gonna shift the kick and... Let's do the same thing with the snare, so it won't be perfect. But since now there are two different instruments, I mean like the kick and the snare drum, let's be a bit more subtle with the ticks. So let's try five first. So at 27, I can hear some inconsistencies, but to be honest, I think 20 would even be doable. 14. Okay, so now I'm gonna play the blast beat and I'm gonna switch between 12 and zero. So it's very subtle, but especially the snare timing is something that I'm listening to like for, for the overall vibe. So let's check that in the mix. Cool. So just by using the quantize panel and that um, logical editor preset, I can humanize my drums way faster. Now a very important thing in my workflow for programming and basically anything in my project is using my keypad for my quantization. So let me show you. So when I go to edit and key commands and this thing here, setting up this is the time saver of my life. So you see one second, fourth, eighth, etc. So whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteen notes and thirty second notes because metal, right? But what I did is I made an easy, simple system to set this to the keypads. So as you can see, control and number pad one together is whole notes. Control number pad two is second notes. And I'll show you this in practice. So let's program some 16 kicks. So what I'll do is hold control and press six because six for me is 16th notes. And as you can see, we have 16 notes, just drag it in, 16 kicks. So let's say I wanna have uh, the snare on every second beat. Just press control. Half notes, so that's two. Now the only thing I have to do, because I have snap on, so snap on you do with J. Press it in between. Done. So now we have this. So if I want to have quarter hi-hats, like one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, right? Control four. So that's quarter notes. Only thing I have to do is drag in my hi-hat. So now I have this. So if you want to do like a right here on eighth notes, probably guessed it, control and eight. So go to the right. So this makes my whole workflow speed up immensely. Like instead of going all the way, all the way to the top and selecting this, 
I can just do one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. So to round up this video, if I could give you two tips to become better at programming metal drums is first of all, talk to drummers. Because if you're new to programming drums, you need to develop an ear for it. And this is the cool part about metal drummers. For example, when you play like a skank beat, like tuka, 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 that kind of beat, uh, some drummers like to play the hi-hat on the kick, uh, but most drummers, and I personally prefer it as well, like to play the hi-hat on the snare. So besides talking to drummers, the other tip I could give you is listen to records with cool drumming. And this is very subjective because personally I grew up with, uh, I don't know, like Machine Head, Metallica, Slayer, um, later on like Hate Eternal with Derek Roddy. Uh, Necrophages is a huge influence on me, especially the Epitaph record with Hannes Grossman, which is in my opinion, one of the best drummers of all time. But to be honest, in my experience, uh, my drum programming started to become better when I talked to drummers. So in 2012, I joined a band called Aborted and the drummer of the band is Ken Bedani, which is in my opinion, the best metal drummer out there. And just jamming with him, just listening to his fills and asking him about his fills and being with him in the studio made me realize how much, how much voicing and versatility there is between different drummers. So hopefully you learned something today. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And until then, see you next time. Cheers.